evening. I see that the meaning of the word punctuality hasn't yet sunk in with certain members of our class. You see, Max, I told you we'd be here before Professor. Yeah, better sit down before he comes. Okay, okay. Good evening. How did you get in? Through the window? You're late. Too busy drinking in the pub to notice the time? Well, we've not been in a pub, have we, Max? Sure we haven't. <laughs> Look, we were coming to the school and we see this old lady trying to cross the road. Yeah, that's right, she was very old. A hand very blind. Yeah, pushing a pram. <laughs> An old blind lady pushing a pram. Uh, well, maybe she wasn't exactly blind. Well, maybe she wasn't exactly there, either. Sure it's true. On Max's life, we have not been in that pub. Honest. All right. Hey, you left your books in the pub. <laughs> What's the matter? Look behind you. <laughs> Not been in the pub, eh? Now I remember we were there just for a minute. Come on, sit down, all of you. Hey, why are you not tell me the teacher's behind me, you Italian macaroni? Why are you <laughs> you lump of Spanish omelette? Uh, all right, come on, sit down and be quiet. Hey, uh, teacher is right. You sit down. Sit down, be quiet. Go on, sit down. Go on, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, why, well, that includes you. Por favor. Uh, you heard... <laughs> Sit down. I'm getting rather tired of this continual habit of certain people being late. And 7.30 is the time class commences, and you should all be sitting at your desks ready to begin work. Now, I shan't tell you again. In future, anybody who comes late will go straight home. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> You're late. Hey. Oh, no. Look, please. I'm being early. It is only 20 minutes past the 7 o'clock. Correction, it is 25 minutes to the 8. That clock is not being right at all. Oh. And I suppose my watch is not being right also. Yes, please. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that it might be your watch that is wrong? Oh, blimey. This watch is guaranteed never to be wrong. It is 21 Julies. <laughs> Jewels. Yes, please. Hmm. I'm buying it today from the marketplace. You bought that watch from a stall on the market? Most definitely. The man is telling me it is jolly good bargain. 21 Julies. And real gold case. Eighteen turnips. Eighteen carrots. Sorry, please. Well, how much did you pay for this 21 jeweled 18 carat gold timepiece? Uh, two pound, fifty pence. I think he saw you coming, Ali. <laughs> ah, most definitely. He was seeing me coming before I was seeing him. Mm -hmm. but what I mean is you were swindled. Oh, no. Well, you can't buy a watch for £2.50. Ah, but the man is telling me it is being so cheap because it is bankruptured stuck. <laughs> Rupt head. <laughs> it's not going, Ali. Uh, perhaps it needs a wind up? Well, there's nothing to <laughs> Look, it's empty. Oh, blimey. I am being cheated. Excuse me, please. I go to find the crooked well, man. He won't be there now, Ali. Then what about my money? Well, you just had to put it down to experience. Now sit down. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> How are you coming along? Bochanot. Have you learnt any more English? Bochanot. More English? Tanultam e új angol kifejezéseket. Igen. Yes. Bloody foreigners. <laughs> Well, that's a start. You'll just have to follow the lesson as best you can, yeah? And I'll explain later. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, well, never mind. Sit down and do your best. Right. Now, tonight we're going to look at sentence construction. Now, can anybody give me a, a definition of a sentence, please? Me, please. Yes, Suli. A sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense. Very good. For example, communism is only true way of life. Thank or you. capitalists are enemies of peace loving people. Or China will yeah, I think you're way to a point. <laughs> right, now a sentence contains eight parts of speech. Can anybody tell me what they are? Come along. Now? Good, excellent. Pronoun. Very good. Hey, why am I very good and she's excellent? Well, all right, you're both excellent. Sure. Right, anybody else? A third. Good. Hadwell. Well done. Objective. Yes. Appreciational. Good. Uh, good, yes. Yeah. Conjunction. Well done. And one more. 
Come on, does anybody know what the other one is? An interjection. Right, can anybody tell me what an interjection is? Si, senor. Yes, one? Needle. <laughs> si, like a uh, doctor. <laughs> interjection. No, one, uh, that's an injection. Ah, that's so right. An interjection <laughs> is a word put into a sentence to express some emotion, such as oh, ah, or hush. Right, we will now construct a sentence starting with a noun. Ranjit, can you give us a noun, please? Idiot. <laughs> Idiot? Surely you could have thought of something else. I could have said Muslim. <laughs> Don't you be insulting me, you finisher? Right, that'll do, Ranjit. You're here to learn English. Now, kindly keep your personal prejudices to yourself. A thousand apologies. Right. Now, give me a noun, please. A waiter. A waiter. Good. Now, Max, an adjective. Come along. Look, Ranjit gave us a noun, waiter. You describe him. Is he old, tall, short, thin? But how do I know? I never met him. <laughs> We're not talking about an actual waiter, Max. Ah, uh, he's a part-time waiter. <laughs> we are trying to construct a sentence. Ranjit has given us a noun, waiter. I want you to give me an adjective that describes him. Okay. A old waiter. An old waiter. With a moustache. <laughs> Just old will do. Okay. Right, we'll put a definite article in. The old waiter. Now we need a verb. Something he was doing. Danielle? Ooh, making love. <laughs> can't you think of, think of something better that he could have been doing? But I can't see nothing then better than making love. <laughs> yes, but something more appropriate to a waiter in a restaurant. Bon alors. He served. Served. Good. The old waiter... Served. Now we need an adverb. Taro. Pass up. <laughs> yeah, an adverb, please, modifying the verb serve. Carefully. Carefully. Uh, carefully. <laughs> served. Carefully. Right. Now, can anybody add anything to that? The old waiter carefully served. Fish and chips. <laughs> Two more nouns and a conjunction. Okay, cocky. <laughs> the old waiter carefully served. Two more nouns and a conjunction. <laughs> All right, first time, Giovanni. Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, there, there's a geezer out here who wants to see Miss Courtney. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I can't find her anywhere. Will you come out and have a word with him? Oh, uh, yes, all right. Now, I want you to complete the sentence using an interjection, a preposition, and a pronoun, and I shall be back in a minute, all right? All right. This is him. Are you Miss Courtney? <laughs> I look like Miss Courtney? Well, I asked to see Miss Courtney. Ah, well, who are you? My name's Forbes Fortescoe. Pardon? Forbes Fortescoe. Oh, Jeremy Brown. I'm an ATC. I'm a BA, Oxford. My card. Ah. Oh, you're an ATC, an assistant town clerk. Quite so. Ah, I see. Ah, Miss Courtney. Mr. Brown. Is this another of your foreign students? No, he's an ATC. I don't care what nationality he is. <laughs> it's time you were in the classroom. Madam, my name is Forbes. <laughs> he's hyphenated. How unfortunate. <laughs> I'm here from the town hall. We have some news from the palace. Victoria or Crystal? <laughs> Buckingham. I'm here in connection with the uh, ro royal visit to the borough next week, and as the Duke himself laid the foundation stone of this building, it has been suggested that Her Majesty and His Royal Highness pay a brief informal visit to the school. The Queen and Prince Philip coming here. Next Tuesday. Did you hear that, Mr. Brown? They're coming here, the two of them, together in person, mm. him and her, together in person. Oh, well, calm down, Miss Courtney. Don't overexcite oh, yourself. Who's getting overexcited? Have, have you been very calm about the whole thing? <laughs>
strange things on toilet doors, bucks and does, um, you know, lads and lasses, setters and pointers, but I have never seen dukes and queens. Oh, it's not for them to use. Well, what's it for? Well, it's Miss Courtney's idea. You see, she didn't want to offend the royal family by letting them see toilet doors. So I've done the best thing, I've disguised them. Oh, very diplomatic. My dear, what a waste of time it is, though, Mr Brown. They must have blues in Buckingham Palace. Oh, absolutely. Is the old battle axe in yet? The old battle axe is here. <laughs> meaning you, Miss Courtney. Well, I trust you are not referring to Her Majesty. Oh, no, 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 no. I was referring to Gladys, the tea lady. Huh. Here. What's this for? Well, it is not for sticking in your buttonhole. <laughs> it is to wave at the royal personages. <laughs> you going to change? Into what? Well, you surely don't intend to greet our distinguished guests in that jacket. Haven't you anything a little more formal? I've got a black tie I wear for funerals. <laughs> Here. Better. You're as if I'm going to a cup final. Sydney, hmm? go and sweep the schoolyard. I swept it up once. Well, sweep it again. You wouldn't like me to go down on my hands and knees and scrub it, would you? Don't be ridiculous. It wouldn't dry before they arrive. <laughs> I think I'll go and polish the silver. What silver? Well, I brought my silver tea set in case they wanted a drink. Oh, perhaps the Duke would prefer a tot of rum being an ex-naval man. Oh, oh dear. dear. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, well, he'll just have to make do with Shelley. Shall I ask Gladys to make up a couple of ham rolls in case they feel a bit peckish? Ham rolls? <laughs> you can't give royalty ham rolls. <laughs> this is a very special occasion. Tell her to open a tin of salmon. <laughs> want anything to eat. It is better to be prepared. Oh, I wonder if we should have got a red carpet. Look, why don't you go the whole hog and ask the music class to play the national anthem as they enter? This is supposed to be an informal visit. I don't think you're approaching this special occasion in the right attitude. Well, I think you're being carried away. Nonsense! This is an opportunity for all the staff and students to show their loyalty and devotion to our sovereign. It's up to the entire school to make a good impression. One never knows where it may lead. The New Year's Honours List isn't far away. Honours List? Yes. A knighthood could be within your grasp. A knighthood? <laughs> Arise, Sir Jeremy. <laughs> Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Majesty. I beg your pardon. I thought you were the Queen. Have you been drinking? No, just stay dreaming. Well, you had better wake up. They are due to arrive in half an hour. Now, where are your students? Uh, they're in the cloakroom, changing. Changing? Yes, they insisted on wearing their national costumes. Greenwich! Greenwich! Are you there? What? <laughs> God, blimey, roll for it, can you? Well, don't you like it? You do what? Don't you like it? Very patriotic. Yeah. I don't know whether to salute you or run you up the flagpole. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Yeah? Look. Oh, God. <laughs> That'll surprise the Duke. Surprise him, he'll paralyse him. <laughs> You're supposed to curse you, not flatter him your underwear. Oh. I mean, my stu... Good heavens. Hey, don't speak to us, you flat you own niggers. <laughs> here, they will come up here, won't they? Oh, yes, I expect so, Gladys. Oh, I do hope so. I think Prince Philip's lovely. And I've always been fond of sailors. Hey, <laughs> don't forget he belongs to the Queen. Yeah. Have you seen any of my students? They're still changing. Ah, well, go and tell them to hurry up, Sid. All right, yeah, I'll get them. Yeah, and I'd better get tidied up, too. The Duke might want to inspect me utensils. <laughs> <laughs> I think this looks better on you. <laughs> All ready for your inspection, sir. Carry on, Sid. Fish China! <laughs> Is that your national costume? This is uniform of people's army of rehabilitation as prescribed by Chairman Mao. Mm. You not like it? Well, I think it lacks a certain uh, finish, a belt of ammunition, a couple of hand grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Miss India! <laughs> oh, very 
nice, Jamila. It is Jamila, isn't it? <laughs> this Germany! What do you think? Very Teutonic. Thank you. Miss Sweden! Beautiful, yes. Beautiful, very. And the close to? Well, I wasn't referring to you. <laughs> Miss France! <laughs> what do you think? Great bell. Merci, chérie. <laughs> Miss Greece! <laughs> Mr. Grease! <laughs> Are you comfortable in that, Max? Shabit cold, boss. <laughs> Mr. Pakistani! God bless Queen Elizabeth. And not forgetting the Duke of Edinburgh. Duke of Edinburgh? Him also. Oh. <laughs> Italy! Representing Italy or the Mafia? I represent Sicily. <laughs> Mr. Punjab! Oh, most endearing, Ramsey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Japan! <laughs> Nanki Poo, I presume? Uh, so. <laughs> and last but not least, Mr. Spain! All right! <laughs> ah! Professor, there's still nobody coming. Well, any minute now. Come on, any places, everyone. Hey, plenty um, where's Zoltan? Uh, he's going to try and find the toilet. Ah, well, that may take him a while. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd like to stress that this visit is informal, so that Her Majesty may not necessarily come into this classroom. Aww. Yeah, well, you mustn't be too disappointed if she doesn't, but if she does, I want you all to behave just as if she weren't here. Understand? <laughs> In view of the occasion, it would seem appropriate to tell you a little of the history of our British kings and queens. Now, it all started with the Norman Conquest. I have seen that on the television. Very funny English play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to the actual invasion of England by uh, William of Normandy. It was 1066. Wrong. What? I beg your pardon? 1066. <laughs> Maybe... Uh... 1056. It was 1066. No, cannot be. 1066. Yes. 60 minutes, one hour. <laughs> 1066. Six minutes past 11. 1066 was the year. <laughs> so right. Right. Normandy. By the way, does anybody know what other name he was known by? William the... Conqueror. <laughs> Conqueror. Okay. Now, he was succeeded by his third son, William Rufus, the Red King. Oh, blimey. You are having a communist king? <laughs> no, no. He was called the Red King because of his red hair. Jolly good. <laughs> Now, William Rufus died in 1100 after being struck by an arrow in the woods. Hey, maybe it was Robin the Hood. <laughs> now, Robin the Hood wasn't... Robin Hood wasn't born then. He was in the Middle Ages. How can he be in Middle Age if he's not yet been born? <laughs> Never mind about Robin Hood, all right? Yes, very calm. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Brown, but they will be here any moment now, and I thought it would be rather nice if one of your students were to present this to Her Majesty. Mm. 
I'll do that. It is usual for a bouquet to be presented by a lady. Hey, with that skirt, who's going to know the difference? <laughs> Come outside and I'll show you. Yeah. All right, do sit down. Now, who do you suggest, Miss Coleman? Well, how about Jamila? Yeah. Jamila, dear, will you come here? And for goodness sake, girl, get rid of that knitting. <laughs> now then, Jamila, I want you to wait with me in the hall until their majesties arrive, and then you can present this to the queen. You curtsy first, and then you give it to her. Now, let's try that. I am the queen. Who's <laughs> got <laughs> me? No, 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 Jamila, come on, she's just pretending. Oh, ha, huh. I am understand. <laughs> Queenie? <laughs> you do not speak until you are spoken to, and then you address her as ma'am. Now let's try again. Ah, oh, there you are. Uh, 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 Superintendent, how soon will the royal couple be here? They're not coming. What? We've had to rearrange the schedule. Oh. They're going straight from the hospital to the town hall. We're cutting out the visit to the school. Well, I'd better go and tell Miss Courtney. There isn't time. You must come with me now. You men, follow me. Uh. Please? My name is Mrs. Baxter. But Charlotte? My name is Mrs. Baxter. And my husband has just joined your woodwork class. <laughs> Do you think I could have a word with him? Uh, hey, sit. Now sit, you sit, can't. Sit. Now, uh, go, blimey. <laughs> it's your... She's here. She's arrived. She's outside. She can't She has to come in by the back entrance. But don't leave her standing outside. Sydney, show her in. <laughs> so pleased to meet you, Ma. Uh, where is your husband? He's in the woodwork class. <laughs> I do hope we shall have the pleasure of meeting him later on. This is Mr. Brown, our English teacher. How do you do? Mum. Jamila. class, we are endeavouring to teach English to foreign students. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Cole. Don't interrupt, Miss Brown. I think you should Mr. Brown. All right, please yourself. Oh, would you care for a cup of tea? <laughs> it's not too much trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. You must come round and have a cup of tea with my husband and I sometime. <laughs>
Ranjit, it's your turn. I'm thinking what I'm going to be doing. You have been thinking for five minutes. Patience. Our play is problem, not patience. <laughs> what do we want, Sully? Eighteen. Okay, Koki, here we go. Eighteen! Nineteen! Twenty! Hey, bullseye's to win, huh? Very good, bravo! Right, it's your turn now, Jolton. Okay. Mm. Hey, attention. Huh? Sultan is throwing. <laughs> momentito, momentito. It's <laughs> right, you throw. I know bad. What we want? A five. Where five? There. <laughs> hey, you're getting better. Yes? Yeah, you're starting to hit the board. Good. You're supposed to throw it forwards and not the backwards. Where is it? Ah, uh, sorry. I see. <laughs> Pardon. Oh, dear me. It's a good thing you were wearing a tie, Ranji, otherwise you would have gone straight through your head. Oh, blimey. You wouldn't have felt it. Don't be feeling my fist in a moment. Sorry, <laughs> Sir Ranji. I'm still thinking. Yeah, six are slow thinkers. Shut your muscle oh. mouth. We must have time limit on us. Come. Ah, I'm getting a good one. Sugar. No good, though. Quel idiot. Sugar is not spelled S-H-U-G-A-R. I'm thinking you are mistaken. You damn fool. Everybody knows sugar is spelled with two G's. <laughs> we win. One game, one? Uh, we not have time. Mr. Brown, he be here pretty pronto. You flight and you ruse. Uh, I beat you blind, that fool. Lighty ho, let's see you get double the top with your eyes closed. Easy, easy. <laughs> closed. A one, a two. <laughs> we must. I was trying to get that in top. Roxanne, you get it in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hurt, Sid? Huh? Did it hurt? You bend down and you'll find out. <laughs> what is going on in here? Uh, not a thing. Dart game. I, I beg your pardon? Sid was us telling her he's good at dart playing. Well, in future, Sydney, will you kindly remember that the students have more important things to do? Do you get my point? Yeah, I got his point as well. <laughs> What's the matter? This door is full of holes. Yes. Maybe it's a wooden worm. <laughs> wood worm. Ah, it's all right. Yes. Well, I've just had a telephone call from Mr. Brown. He says he will be along later. Apparently, he is tied up at his flat. Oh, blimey. Should he not be going to untie him? <laughs> I was speaking metaphorically. It is better. You speak English. <laughs> Now, Mr. Brown may put up with your stupid remarks, but I assure you, you will find me a very different kettle of fish. Excuse me, please. What is mean kettle of fish? You'll find out. Now, until Mr. Brown arrives, I intend to find out what sort of progress you are making. You, how are you doing? Bochanot. How are you doing? Very pleased, thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> About your English. Bochanot. Your English. No, no, no. Hungarian. <laughs> your purpose. No, no, look. Hungarian. Sit down. Thank you. You. Give me the present perfect of the verb to move. You know it not? Well, of course I know it. Oh, good. Then you can me tell? It is not my place to tell you anything. How can we learn if you tell us not? <laughs> you. Ah, si, signora. <laughs> what is a comma? Por favor. <laughs> what is a comma? Comma? Ah, comma. Comma is when you are unconscious. <laughs> that is a coma. A comma is a punctuation mark. Ah, sorry. I don't think Mr. Brown is teaching you anything. Master G teaches very lots English. When I am arrived, 
Not one body is understand me. Now, everybody is understand everything I am speak. I see. Well, in that case, if someone were to stop you in the street and ask you the time, what would you say? Ji, meri kari panj min tak gaye te hun poore pone aat fajne. That wouldn't help them. Oh, yes. In my street is all Indian people. <laughs> Silence! You! Yes, please. Give me a collective noun for a collection of ants. Aunties. <laughs> Not ants. Ants. Insects. What is a lot of ants? A damn nuisance. <laughs> Never heard of swarm? Yes, please. England is called Pakistan swarm. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm late, Miss Courtney. So am I. I have just been seeing how your students are getting on. Oh, I think they're progressing. Yes, but in which direction? <laughs> What have you been saying to upset Miss Courtney? Oh, blimey, we are saying nothing. She's asking some questions, and we are telling her some answers. Yeah, well, that explains it. <laughs> are you going away? Only for one night. I'm having my flat painted. That's why I can't sleep there. You are having your bed painted also? No. It's just that I, I can't stand the smell of fresh gloss paint. Uh, where will you be sleeping tonight? Well, I'll probably stay at the YMCA. Eh, much better than the YWCA. <laughs> I don't suppose any of you have a spare room, do you? It would give me much pleasure for you to share my humble house. But unfortunately, my cousin and his family, and also his cousin and his family, is staying with me. You've got two families both living in one house? Two families both living in one room. <laughs> you are very welcome to come and stay with me. Have you got a spare room? No, but I have a very big bed. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you for the offer, but I think it had better be the YMCA. Uh, you can with me stay. Yeah, don't tell me you've got a very big bed also. Nope. I have a small bed. Better match. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you stay with Hus. Who's Hus? Um, us. <laughs> me and Giovanni. Sure, we got a room. I didn't know you shared a flat. Yeah, I had to leave my other place. I had a big fight with a neighbor because of the noise. What noise? Every night after midnight, guitar practice for one hour. Oh, well, surely you could ask them to stop? No. Why not? It's me who practice the guitar. <laughs> Don't still practice the guitar, do you? No, finish guitar. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> now I practice the drums. What? I make it a joke. I not practice anything. Hey, what you say? You can stay with us? Well, I... Um... Okay, you stay. Hey, why don't we have a party? That's a good idea. Everybody comes. Yeah. I bring a bottle. Yeah, make sure it's not empty. What <laughs> bottle bring? Yeah, we get us some pizza. Chicken curry. Flight lice. Chapati and papadums. Talam salata. Goyage. German sausage. Paella la valenciana. Bombay duck. Kiss the hand. Smurgos boot. I make your sukiyaki. We give you a night you never forget. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Come in, Professor. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is the hall. Oh, this is nice. the kitchen. Oh, this is my bedroom. Oh, that's uh, my bedroom. This is the living room. And this... And that's my bedroom? No, that's the bathroom. Oh. Well, where am I sleeping? Well, you sleep here on the sofa. Sure, it's a very comfortable. <laughs> What was what? <laughs> that awful noise. It's only a train. Only a train? This is worse than the waiting room at Waterloo Station. Don't worry, you get used to it. They only run every ten minutes after our shower. <laughs> I'll never be able to sleep through all that noise. We give you some cotton wool to put in your ears. Well, I shall need it. Hey, look, we both got better get the drinks. You want to come with us, Professor? Well, actually, I'd like a bath, if that's all right with you. Okay, okay. We'll be back in ten minutes. <laughs> I left them here on the table. Where was Professore? Well, he said he was going to have a bath. Okay, come on. All right. 
Uh, just a moment. Yes, Sergeant. Yes, madam. A burglar? No, don't panic. Stay where you are, and I'll send a police car around right away. He's trying to pick next door's lock. Don't worry, I'll sort him out. Oh, I do hope this sort of thing doesn't happen often. I only moved in yesterday. No, stand back, I'm going out there. George, <laughs> you stay with Miss Partridge. <laughs> All right, come quietly. <laughs> oh, well, look, you're making a mistake. Can you live here? Uh, no, but I'm staying here with friends. What's the address? Uh, I don't know. I've never been here before, you see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Look, there's a perfectly simple explanation. No, well, why don't you come down to the station and tell it to the perfectly simple sergeant? <laughs> Hey, Professor, he's not out of here. Hey, he's not in the bathroom. Well, he's not out there either. Maybe he decided to sleep at YMCA after all. Mm. Ah, his bag is still there. He said he was going to have a bath. Oh, oh, blimey. Maybe he has gone down the plug hole. <laughs> Japanese are philosophers say. Oh, who know? Oh, personal is not here. He must be somewhere else. <laughs> he lies us somewhere else, but somewhere where? Hey, why not not here? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Hey, what's the matter? It's Mr. Brown. What about Mr. Brown? He's gone. Gone. Ten minutes ago he was here. Now he's gone. Santa Madre, querida. He's a lot of dead. He's a vanish. Ah. Gracias, adios. Right, what's your name? Jeremy Brown. Brown? Yes. Oh, well, I suppose it makes a change from a Smith or Jones. Now, according to PC Barnes, you were caught breaking and entering. I was not breaking and entering. Were you picking the lock? Yes, but... Do you live there? No, but, uh... Charge, breaking and entering. <laughs> now, look, you're making a terrible mistake. That's what Crippin said. I am Sid, they've not nabbed you tonight as well. Is he one of your accomplices, eh? No, I know him. He can vouch for me. The state he's in, he couldn't even vouch for his own mother. <laughs> What's he done, Barnes? Drunk and disorderly. Pardon? Drunk and disorderly. So am I. <laughs> Sergeant, here's the caretaker at the school where I teach. He will tell you who I am. You. Do you know this man? He's a copper. <laughs> It's me, look. Tell the sergeant who I am. Charlie Farnsbaum. <laughs> what? Never tell him your real name, son. Oh, <laughs> take him away. Bring him back when he's sober. Come on. Ah, we go. <laughs> now then, Mr. Brown, or Farnsbarns, or whatever you call yourself. Brown. Brown. Professore. Max Giovanni, thank goodness you're here. Look, tell this, tell this sergeant who I am. He's Mr. Jeremy Brown. Yeah, he teaches us to speak the English. What? Do you live at Six Winthrop Road? Sure we do. What happened? Where have you been? Well, I got locked out on your balcony and your public-spirited neighbour thought I was a burglar and called the police. So you were telling the truth, huh? Yes, I have a good mind to sue you for false arrest. If you do, there'll be a charge of assault and battery. I haven't assaulted anyone? No, but I should go now. Before I do. <laughs> Ooh, I'm 
Blimey, I was hungry, so I'm eating it. <laughs> Big a deal. Well, actually, I could do with a drink. Eh, uh, no drink. What, not a drop? Eh, uh, see, si, one drop. <laughs> Don't worry, Professor, I'll fix everything for us. Max, pub. Okay, I go and get some beer. Oh. Then we all have at a party. No, no party. I make a date with Daniel. We all going to have a dance. Hola. 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 We must also be go. Yes. <coughs> ha, Master G, Ali is be let me watch his television. Huh? Yes, we are not wanting to miss Starkers and Crutch. <laughs> Tasky and Hutch. Jolly good. I see you at school time. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. A thousand apologies? Why? What have you done? Nothing. <laughs> Is what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> what are you going to be doing? Taking Ingrid for a late show. We can't see Swedish film. <laughs> it is being all about a Swedish pair. <laughs> yeah, I think you mean au pair. That is correct. You'll be excusing us, please? Yeah, certainly. Have a good time. <laughs> also, also. Also. Well, don't tell me you two are going to the pictures too. No, not so. Uh, Sully and Emil. Go to bed. Oh. <laughs> Where you come? Not together. Uh, I go home to read little lead book. Uh, I, I go sleep home. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> Sucky. Mm -hmm. Too much stuff. Hope you have present night. Yeah. Ciao. Well, it's going to be a swinging party. Not to worry. Now we got plenty beer for five. You have even more for three. Oh, not you two, Anna. Yeah, us two. I help Zoltan with homework. Ah. Come. Again. Good morning. <laughs> Good night. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and then there were three. Okay, everybody's eating. Hey, where is everybody, sir? They've all pushed it off. Some nice friends we got. Hey, look, why don't we go down to the disco? Hey, that's a good idea. And we'll pick up a couple of birds. Oh, I don't want to pick up a couple of birds. The yeah, professor is right. We don't want to pick up a couple of birds. We pick up three birds, oh. one each. <laughs> now, you two go on. Why you not want to come with us? Well, I feel tired and wounded. I think I'll just uh, turn in for the night. You sure now? Yeah. No, but don't stop you two going. I'll kick, Cocky. I'll just get ready for bed. And you'll find some blankets in the herring cupboard. Ah, yes. And there are some... <laughs> Any cotton wool? In the bathroom. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Hey, why is he shouting? I don't know. <laughs> you want a beer before we go? Sure. Hey, ah. Hey, it's a stuffy in here. Yeah, there's a bit, isn't it? <laughs> ah, that's a better. Yes, Salute. Ah. Nice party. Fantastic. You know, Max, I really fancy that Ingrid. Yeah, you fancy anyone. That's a not true. Is it? <laughs> I don't fancy you. <laughs> Our light's just gone out. <laughs> Mr. Brown must be wanting to sleep. We better go to the disco. Okay. <laughs> it's locked. Hey, Professor! <laughs> oh, Swiss so 
very quiet. Nothing could be heard. Yet the old lady could almost feel a sense of evil. She listened. The silence was oppressive. Suddenly there was a knock at the window. Yes, Sergeant. Oh, it's not you again, madam. Are you sure it's not the same fellow? There are two fellows. <laughs> Look, I, I suggest you just sit there and wait. Go round and see a neighbour and wait till the constable arrives, eh? Excuse me, the front door was open. I did knock. Oh, sorry, I, I was asleep. There's burglars on my balcony. You sure? Yes, I saw them evil looking they were. Hmm. They'll be rifling my drawers now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the fr French window wasn't locked. Oh, I see. All, all right, well, uh, leave it with me. I I'll go and see what they're up to. Oh, do be careful. Yes. What are we going to do? Break the window. Funny, what are you doing here? Well, you locked us out. Yeah, we knocked on the window next door and the woman screamed and ran away. Oh, she thought you were a burglar. You better get inside. Oh, just a moment. I'll go and get the beer. No, 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 I'll get it. You stay here. <laughs> All right, thank you. Now, are you sure you don't mind me staying here for the night? Not at all, sir. <laughs> I think it'll be safer for both of us, eh? Right. At least I'll get some sleep. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night. Who's that? Shh. Oh, it's you, Mr. Brown. Let's have a sing song. Sugar in the morning, sugar in the morning. Coexistence. China always prepared to live peacefully. Well, let's make a start in the classroom, shall we? In future, no more ideological arguments. Now, are you willing to make a truce, Taro? Yes, sir. Mm. I apologize. Ah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's happening? Well, Taro and Su Li have decided to live together in harmony. 
Is that like living in sin? <laughs> no, Danielle. We are making trousseau. A trousseau? You're getting married. When is a happy day? Not trousseau. Trousseau. <laughs> yeah, but what Tara means is that uh, he and Suli have decided to have no more political arguments. Ah, oh, d'accord. In harmony, yes. Tell me, Daniel, did you do anything exciting over the weekend? No, did you? No. What a pity. You were alone, not being excited. I was alone, not being excited. Together, we could have both been very excited. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we could now. Um... Good evening, Mr. Brown. Oh, Ali. What have you been doing with yourself over the weekend? Oh, blimey. Saturday, <laughs> I'm going to the Palace of Buckingham to see Her Majesty the Queen. But she was not in. <laughs> yes. I'm going to Drowning Street to see the Prime Minister, Mr. Colorgas. <laughs> yes, please. He was also not in. Then I'm going to see the Nelson's tomb. Well, I hope he was in. Oh, no. I did not see him either. Oh, go on. <laughs> Buenas noches. Ah, Juan. Si, sí, senor. Yeah, I've got a bone to pick with you. Chicken bone. <laughs> no, a bone of contention. Ah, I never had that before. <laughs> Last week I asked you to write out a verb is a word that denotes an action or state 20 times. Ah, write it, hombre, look. Here it is. A verb is a word that denotes an action or state 20 times. Yes, 20 times, right. I sometimes wonder if you're quite as stupid as you look. Por favor. Never mind. <laughs> good night. Good night. No, Zoltan, good evening. Good evening. She teach me plenty much. Oh. <laughs> Did you have a nice weekend, Anna? Yeah, I enjoyed myself with the fairies. Fairies? <laughs> what, at the bottom of your garden? Nine, on the River Thames. Oh, fairies! Yeah, fairies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Master G. Been shopping, have you? We are being on the funny fair. And I'm winning these gifts on the shooting rifles for only 20p. Well, you must have been hitting the bullseye. Oh, no. I hit the owner man. He's giving us the prices to go away. And we are we have ice cream and donuts and lemonade and hot dogs. Then we went up and down on the moon rocket. It's a wonder you both weren't violently sick. We were twice each. <laughs> right, while I'm marking the register for Miss Courtney, would you all turn to page 27, please? Yes, sentence construction again. Enter. I brought your tea. Thank you. Are you all right? Would you like two tickets for the Lady Circle Supper Dance? Oh, I wouldn't mind. I like dancing. Five pounds each. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, as a committee member, I'm supposed to sell six tickets. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll get rid of them. Not at that price. It's far too expensive for a supper dance. Well, I suppose they put on a good spread. Oh, yes. Last year I managed to get two sausage rolls. Oh. Who else do you know, fool enough to buy sausage rolls at £2.50 a time? Oh. oh, Mr Brown, come in. We were just talking about you. <laughs> I believe all. Thank you, Gladys. Yes, all right, Miss Courtney. Good luck. What does she mean, good luck? <laughs> Nothing at all. Now, Mr. Brown, oh, do sit down. Oh, I've just bought the register, actually. Well, thank you very much, but there's no need to rush away. Sit down. Yeah, but my students will I'm be sure waiting. I'm sure they won't miss you for a few moments. Would you care to join me in a cup of tea? Yes, thank you. <laughs> now, Gladys and I were just talking about you. Yeah. We were saying uh, how lonely your life must be. After all, you live alone. There's nothing to do in the evening. I mean, for example, what are you doing tomorrow night after class? Well, nothing in particular. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Would you care to go to a dance? Oh, yeah. With you. I'm <laughs> afraid not, Mr. Brown. But don't be disappointed. I shall be there. Ah. But I already have my own escort. <laughs> no, the um, Lady Circle are holding their annual supper dance. I happen to have two spare tickets. And, of course, I immediately thought of you. 
You do dance? Well, a little, but I know Gene Kelly. <laughs> well, that's splendid. There we are, then. That's settled. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very good of you to consider me. Oh, not at all, dear boy. You can give me the money later. <laughs> yes, all right. Money? <laughs> For the tickets. Five pounds each. Five... You didn't say tomorrow night, did you? Yes. Oh, dear, what a pity. <laughs> what is, Mr. Brown? Well, I have to go to the laundrette. I'm down to my uh, last clean shirt. How unfortunate. Yes, any other night but tomorrow would have been fine. Well, of course, if you do have to go to the laundrette. Oh, yes, I do, I do. Oh, well, then we had uh, better forget about it. Yes. <laughs> After all, I'm not the sort of person to uh, put pressure on anyone. Oh, no, I'm sure you're not. No point in forcing anyone to do anything they don't want to do. Oh, very true. Oh, by the way, I shall be having lunch next week with the area education officer. I expect he'll want to know how you're getting on. Really? <laughs> the right word in his ear could lead to a full-time job. Oh, well, that would be marvellous. Yes. Pity about the tickets. <laughs> Ten pounds, you said. You've changed your mind. <laughs> how nice. Sorry. Right, now pay attention. Tonight we are going to play a little game. Pontoons? <laughs> no, not a card game, Max. Yeah, I know a good game. Postman's knockers. <laughs> Playing those sort of games either, Giovanni. Now, this is a verbal exercise to help you to improve your English and test your imagination. Blimey, Ranjit is not having a chance. <laughs> what we're going to do is to try to tell a continuing story. That is to say, we could, for example, start with Once upon a time, there was a man called Arthur, and he was a bus driver. And then the next person would add something more about Arthur and the things he did, and so on. You'll soon pick it up once we get started. We'll start with you, Juan. I don't know this man, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur is fictitious. Uh, but you say he's a bus driver. It's make-believe. I made him up. Ah, imaginario. Yeah. I want you to make up a story using your imagination. I understand. Uh, once upon a time, there was a man called Nickel Ass. It's not quite right. No. no. Once upon a time, there was a woman called Nickel Ass. It's pronounced Nicholas. It's all right. Once upon a time, there was a man called Nicholas. He was a postman. Postman. No, no, no. Posterman. One, a man who delivers letters is called a postman. A man who stick poster, posterman. Ha! Bill Sticker. No, no, his name, Nicola. <laughs> right, it's your turn, Ingrid. Tell us more about this uh, Nicholas who is sticking up. Posters. <laughs> One man heats up his ladder when he sees a widow. What is a widow doing up his ladder? <laughs> the widow is in the opposite house. There are four widows, two upstairs widows, one downstairs widow, and a French widow. You mean windows? Oh, sorry. The man is house robbing. Good, good, good. Right, your turn, Zoltan. Please? Yes. Continue the story. Bochana? We are making up a story. Understand story? Story? Yeah. Uh, I know very good story. About Aladdin and his wonderful limp. <laughs> this is another story about Nicholas. Ah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Santa Nicholas comes every year. Ah, uh -huh, yes. This is another Nicholas, not Saint Nicholas, and he is on a ladder. Ladder, yes. Yes, when he sees through a window a burglar, a robber. Now, use your imagination and tell us about what happens next. He sends for ambulance. <laughs> Why would he send for an ambulance? He falls off ladder. <laughs> Good imagination, no? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right, 
Wait, uh, let's see what you can do with the story, Anna. The burglar hears the ambulance but thinks it is the police. So he climbs back out of the window, up the fire escape, onto the roofs. Oh, very good. Max, carry on. There is no way out. He can't go up. He can't go down. Now, the only way he can go is across. It's a big across. So he gets ready. He runs, he jumps, and he misses. Oh, it's going to be a very short story. Ah, no, now it's my turn. He does not kill himself because he jumps onto a big lorry full of, how you say, the cut grass. Hey? The cut grass. Hey! You're not hearing very well. You are not understanding very well. Cut grass is called hay. Oh! No ho, hay. <laughs> so, the hay is saving his life. Good. Well done, Daniel. Right, Giovanni, your turn. Now the coppers are coming. <laughs> the burglar panics. Then he sees at a church. So he goes and knockers on the door. <laughs> a priest, he hears this knockering. So he comes along and opens the door. The burglar, he say, Father, I'm in a big trouble. So the priest say, Come into the church, my son, and I give you sanctuary. Okay, says the burglar, and sanctuary much. <laughs> Genius, right? Carry on, Ranjit. Meanwhile, the man who is falling off his ladders is telling the police that he's not a poster sticker upper man, but a secret agent. And the burglar man is being a Russian spy. Oh, I must say, you've all got very vivid imaginations. Taro? Asso. Russian spy, no call pistol on Hedo. And do change your clothes or to escape. -o. The plot thickens, right, Jim Miller? But the priest is be recovered and crawl to be ring judgment. <laughs> Russian spy, he see him and toing shoot at him. <laughs> As priestess fall, he is pull bell of rope. Ding <laughs> dong. Very good, Ali. <clears throat> yes, please. <clears throat> the agent is thinking, "Hello, hello." That is very strange hearing bells when it is not church going time. <laughs> so he is going into the church and finding the Russian spy up the belfry. <laughs> Your hands stuck up. You are cut, you dirty Russian rat. Oh, God. Well, Shuli, I don't suppose there's really much you can add to all that, is there? Oh, yes, I can. Very devious Russian agent, master of karate, overpowers British agent. Hi, hi, hi! Runs outside where helicopter waiting to take him to safety, fries off to Renningglad. <laughs> Very good. Well, it's not exactly Alistair MacLean, but well done, everybody. Excuse me, Mr. Brown, but oh. about the dance tomorrow oh, night. Yes. It's black tie. Oh, dear. What a pity. Yes, Mr. Brown? Oh, hi, Ron. <laughs> good. You are dancing going? Yes. With Miss Courtney? No, no. She sold me the tickets. You have more than one ticket? Two. Then you must someone else take. Yes, well, that would seem to be a fairly logical assumption. I very much like dancing. <laughs> a medal I have for dancing. I would love to be with you on the floor. <laughs> I am no can dance, but I am very happy for you to be teach me, Master G. Well, what about you, Suli? Aren't you eligible for the other ticket, too? Not me. Western dancing, decadent art form, not worthy of consideration by Chinese Republic. <laughs> ah. Well, that narrows it down to Daniel, Anna, and Ingrid. Squeeze, please. Why are you not taking me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
dance with you, Ali. Oh, no. I'm thinking we could be picking up a couple of nice pieces of a skirt. One for each of us. Well, I hardly think so. Not at the ladies' circle. It says on the tickets, old time. Now, does that narrow it down any further? Oh, but not for me. Because I love to dance in the old-fashioned way. <laughs> A medlar win for my black bottom. Oh, blimey. <laughs> How can she be having a black bottom when she's white? <laughs> it's a dance, Sally. <laughs> Jelly good. <laughs> well, how about you, Anna? Are you any good at old time? Germans are good at everything, but especially military two-step. <laughs> oh, please, me take to dance. He much prefer to take me. Don't you, Monsieur Brown? Mr. Brown must decide for himself. There is nothing to decide, well, Anna. Actually, I think you should decide amongst yourselves, otherwise it might look as if I'm guilty of favouritism. Now, it's almost tea time, so I suggest you go up to uh, the canteen and decide amongst yourselves which one of you girls is coming to the dance with me tomorrow. All right? Here, aren't you going up for coffee? No, thank you, Gladys. Oh. Oh, just a minute, Gladys. Yeah? How's your dashing white sergeant? Oh, if you mean my old man, he's shocking. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm dancing. Oh, so she conned you into buying the tickets then? A blackmail would be more the right word. Look, are you any good at old time? I should say so. I was noted for my Valita. Really? Yeah. Oh, in that case, you're just the woman I need. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm afraid my pas glissade isn't quite what it should be. <laughs> well, I might not know the technical words, yeah, but I could show you the steps. Come on, quick. No. Yes, you want to get it right for tomorrow night, don't you? Um, yes. Right, well, look, you hold my hand right. and I'll la la it. Right, are you ready? Yes. Go to the left, like la 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 back la 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 to this way la 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 back la 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 lovely la 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 Sorry, Miss Courtney, we were practising the Valita. Well, I think I'll sit this one out, if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> and I'll have another cup of tea, if you don't mind, Gladys. Uh, certainly, Miss Courtney. Well, Mr Brown, who are you taking to the dance tomorrow night? Um, well, I haven't exactly decided yet. I don't believe it. It's true. Mr Brown's taking me to the dance. He's just asked me. La, 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 la. <laughs> Right. Come along, everyone. Places, please. Well, let's ask Mr. Brown. I do not understand you, Mr. Brown. Me neither is well. Perhaps he has a mother complex. Mm. What are you all talking about? Your choice of partners for the dance. Well, I haven't chosen a partner for the dance. For the dance. I thought you were deciding it amongst yourselves. We did. Anna de Vinne was. Ah. Until Gladys told us you have asked her. Mm. Gladys? I haven't asked Gladys. That is what she's telling everybody. Oh, that's ridiculous. Mm. There's obviously been some misunderstanding. I'm definitely taking you to the dance tomorrow night, Anna. All right? Uh, Don't worry, I'll sort it out with Gladys. I'll have a word with her now. Uh, oh, uh, ah, Gladys, just the person I want. Yes, Mr Brown? Yeah, it's about the dance tomorrow night. Oh, I know what you're going to say. You do? Yes, but not to worry. You won't mind? Who won't mind? My old man Wally is not a bit jealous. Now, listen, Gladys, I've got something to say to you. Yes, and I've got something to say to you. Yeah, well, I'll come straight to the point. This is the most wonderful thing that's happened to me in 40 years. And I shall never forget tomorrow night as long as I live. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, uh, what were you saying? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Oh, so you're taking Dame Gladys then? I don't know what I'm doing. I hadn't the heart to tell her at the moment I'm taking Gladys and Anna. Ah, Mr Brown. Have you decided yet who you're taking to the dance tomorrow night? Not exactly. That's good, because Dr Wilson has just telephoned he's unable to come. I'm oh, sorry, I don't understand. Well, he was to have been my partner. Now you can have that honour, Mr. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations.
congratulations, son. You just got your hat-trick. Lyme, Lillian Gish. Here, don't you be so cheeky. God. You like Sid? Very seductive. I borrow it from Danielle. Uh-huh. Good evening, Sydney. How do you do? <laughs> do get up. When Mr. Brown arrives, I wish to see him. I'll tell him. <laughs> You're done up like a dog's dinner. Yes. They're all here, the three of them. I've seen them, they've arrived. I wouldn't like to be in your shoes when they find out. Yes, well, with a bit of luck, they won't find out. All right, what's all this you made of? <laughs> we will see. Enter! Mr. Brown, whatever have you done? Oh, it's nothing really, just a slight accident, a compound fracture. Oh, you can't possibly go to the dance like that. Oh, I couldn't let you down. No, 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 I insist, I insist. Oh, but I wouldn't consider it. Oh, well, if, if you feel like that, oh, fine. Oh, certainly I do. Oh, well, that's, that's very kind of you. Ha! She didn't fall for it, did she? Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Brown. <laughs> fracture, I think you said. Yes, right? yes. But it seems more like a movable fracture to me. Pardon? Well, a moment ago, it was in the other leg. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, how do you like... What's the matter? Why are you dressed like that, Miss Smith? Mr Brown is taking me to the dance. Oh, no, he's not. He's taking me. Mr Brown? Oh, look, um, calm down, everybody. I'm sure there's a perfectly simple solution which will keep everybody's honour satisfied. <laughs> Enter. Did you ever think of getting a hearing aid, Sydney? Big pardon? Oh, never mind. 
I brought the stockroom key back. Thank you. Don't forget it's the school concert this week. Pardon? The school concert. Oh, I'll get the hall ready. Good. I wonder what Mr. Brown's class is going to do. Has he mentioned anything to you? Oh, not a dicky bird. No, no. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of them want to do anything. Oh, well, that's nonsense. Every class is expected to put on some sort of show. Better tell Mr. Brown to come and see me at tea break. Pardon? Tea break. Oh, is he? Oh, I can do it. <laughs> everyone. Uh, as you may recall, when last we met, I gave you each, for your homework, a different task to do over the weekend. Hope we've all done them, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I want you each in turn to stand up and give me a report on your various activities, all right? Yeah. Now, who'd like to begin? Hey, and we'll start at the back, shall we, with you, Jamila. <clears throat> now, your homework was a visit to the cinema. Huh. Would you like to tell us about the film you saw? Huh. It was be about most beautiful top-class Indian girl who is fell in love with boy from bottom class. Lower class. Huh. But girl's father is say, no, we get married. So they run away. But father is catch them and chop off boy's leggies. <laughs> Later, father is be die. One day, girl is see beggar man in street. Oh, it is her sweetheart. Ah, oh, she cried. No leggies, no matter. You be marry me. Okay, he say. I be go and be make myself look nice. What, with no leggies? Ha, uh -huh. <laughs> so he go. Wait, she cried and run after him. And then, blam, big motor car hit her and kill her. <laughs> it was most miserable film. And I enjoy it very much. <laughs> good, well done, Jamila. Very good. Taro. Asso. Yeah. <laughs> Your homework was a visit to London Zoo. Tell us about it. Arrive at London Zoo. No, no, Taro. No, uh, London Zoo. Start again. Arrive at London Zoo. <laughs> London Zoo. There are no O's. Oh, yes, please. There are two O's in London and two O's in Zoo. <laughs> That's absolutely correct, Ali, but I'm referring to the ends of the words, all right? Now, carry on, Taro, but do try and get out of the habit of ending every other word in O. I try. Good. <laughs> Went first to see Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo? Like a big bull. <laughs> oh, Buffalo. <laughs> Taro, confused though. <laughs> Words that uh, end in O, like buffalo or radio or vertigo, you pronounce the O, but where there is no O, you don't add one, understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> I give up. All right, Taro, thank you. Right, now, Ali. Yes, please. Now, I asked you to read one of Shakespeare's plays. Were you able to do that? Most definitely. I'm reading about Sherlock. You mean Shylock? Yes, please. The Merchant of Venice. Oh, good. Carry on. <clears throat> First of all, there is a lady porter. Now, her name was Portia. Yes, please. Now, a man called Bassanio is fancying this lady porter, uh, Portia. Yes. But he is broken. Broken what? Stony broken and no money. <laughs> oh, you mean broke. Yes, carry on. So he's going to see his friend Antonio and saying, Oh, please be lending me 3,000 buckets. <laughs> Duckets. Sorry, please. But Antonio was also broken, so he's going to Shylock, the money lending man, and asking him to lend him the money. Shylock is agreeing, but on one condition. If in three months' time he's not paying him back the money, then Shylock could cut off a pound of Antonio's fleshy. Why is he wanting a pound of human flesh? My pay is one of them cannonballs. <laughs> cannonballs. Oh, no. He's doing this because he's not liking Antonio. Anyway... Antonio is in a bigger trouble. He wrecked all his ships. Ships? <laughs> ships. And is not being able to pay back the money. Now Shylock is wanting his pound of flesh. But Lady Portia is pretending to be a lawyer man. And she's saying, agreement was for one pound of flesh and no drop is of blood. Shylock has had it. How can he have had it when he is not getting it? <laughs> Damn fool, 
You are not understanding the Queen's English. I know the Queen is English. You think I'm stupid? Most definitely. <laughs> Thank you, right. Thank you, Ellie. Very well done. Right. Now, Sue Lee, your task was a visit to Petticoat Lane. Petticoat Lane, very disappointing. Oh, why was that? Not see one petticoat. <laughs> petticoat Lane is just the name of the place. Look, don't you find marketplaces interesting? Marketplaces full of capitalistic traders selling inferior merchandise to ignorant working classes at inflated places. Chairman Mao, he always... No, no, never mind what Chairman Mao says. <laughs> Thank you, Suli. Well done. Right, Ranjit, your task was a visit to Highgate Cemetery. And I am finding it very interesting. Good. Well, tell us all about it. Firstly, I'm seeing the burying place of Karl Marx. Ah, yes, the father of communism. But I'm not understanding which one he was. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Was he Chico, Harpo or Groucho? <laughs> Karl Marx was not one of the Marx brothers. Thousand apologies. What else did you see? I'm seeing many beautiful gravestones. Gravestones. That is correct. And some of them have written on them beautiful words. I'm writing one down. You are gone, my dearest wife. Still, I feel no pain. For I know at heaven's gate, we will meet again. <laughs> What's the matter, Giovanni? I can't help it, Professor. He's so sad. That poor husband, he must have loved his wife very much. Please don't be upsetting yourself. The husband is being very happy. How do you know? He's dying the year after. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm so happy for him. And they are both being football fans. Oh, how on earth do you know that? He's having put on his stone, united forever. <laughs> that Ranjit refers to him being reunited with his wife in heaven. Thousand other thousand apologies. Yes, well, thank you. Well done. Good. Right, uh, Giovanni, have you recovered sufficiently to uh, tell us about your visit to Speaker's Corner? Okay, Koki. <laughs> First, I take the tube to Heidi Park. Then, for an hour... Nothing. Well, what do you mean, nothing? Nobody was there. What, at ten o'clock on a Sunday morning? That's right. Well, that's strange. There's always people at Speaker's Corner every weekend. I ask at a policeman, why is there nobody here? And I find out why there is nobody there. Well, why was there nobody there? I was at the wrong corner. <laughs> I, uh, carry on, Julia. Excuse me, Mr. Brown. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Copley. What have you done about the concert? Pardon? Is everybody in this school going deaf? I want to know what you have done about the school concert. Concert? There has been a notice on the board for the past two weeks. You haven't read it. Um, well, I... Mr. Brown has read it. He was discussing it with us before you came in. Again, yes, again. yes, yes, I, I was. Good. Then what are you going to do? Well, I expect we'll all be there. I should jolly well hope you will all be there. But what I want to know is what your students' contribution will be. Contribution? Yes. What little party piece are they going to perform? Party piece? Well, uh... Eh, pardon, signora. It's going to be a surprise. Yes, uh, yes it's, it's going to be a surprise. Well, I don't like surprises. I want to be quite sure that what they're going to do will be acceptable. So I suggest that uh, after tea break, you and your class can give me a preview of their intended performance. Hey. Right. Uh, we help you out pretty good, eh? Yes, but not for very long. Por favor. We still have to think of something to do for this concert in less than half an hour. That's all right. With your brain and our talent, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Gladys. There. 
Thank you. Here, what are they all going to do for the concert tonight? I shudder to think they're outside practising now. Oh, would you like me to do a bit? A bit of what? Well, singing, I was in the choir. Hmm? Oh. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your voice and sing. Turn it up, Gladys, you curdle the milk. Oh, don't you be so cheeky. <laughs> You like my voice, Mr. Brown? I think it's remarkable. Thank you. I could do your turn if you like. What, you sit? Yeah. You, watch this. Any old iron, any old iron, any, any, any old iron. Be all look sweet, talk about the sheet. You all look dapper, feeling dapper to your feet. Dressed in style, brand new tile. Father's old green tile. Wouldn't give you time to be old, what's saying, old iron, old iron. Hey, I've never done that. Give it out. How's that? Señor Brown, yeah. es del programa para el concierto. Oh, for the concert? Ah, yes, yes. good, yes, yes, good, good. Right, come along, everybody. Miss Courtney will be here any minute now. I'm here now, Miss Brown. Oh, good. Um, would you like to sit there, Miss Courtney? Thank you. Yeah. I do hope I'm going to enjoy this. So do I. I wouldn't like to be embarrassed in front of our distinguished guests. No, no. What distinguished guests? Quite a few members of the Education Authority always come to see our concerts. I don't want a repetition of what happened last year. But what, what happened? Mr Jarvis's woodwork students were quite awful. They sang bawdy rugby songs out of tune. Mr Jarvis still hasn't found another job. <laughs> How comforting. Right, would you all uh, come out here when, when, when I introduce you? I act as a kind of compare. Well, I shall stop you if there's anything I don't like. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Stop. Is something the matter? This concert takes place in the afternoon. Ah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Stop. Now, what was wrong with that? Mr Brown, by the time you and your class come on, the audience will have been sitting on those hard chairs for one and a half hours. I wouldn't mention anything about comfort if I were you. Ah, oh, no, right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The English as a foreign language class is proud to present a potpourri of music and laughter. And to start us off, we have from Hungary, Zoltan Zabo. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon. <laughs> Hungarian magic. Hungarian paper. Second Hungarian magic. Stop. You don't want second Hungarian magic? I don't think I even want first Hungarian magic. What, Charlotte? Oh, well, never mind, Zoltan. That's very good. Sit down. Yes. Uh, right. And now from Italy, the irrepressible Giovanni Cupello. Hey! Grazie, grazie. For you, I'm going to do some impersonations. Okay, Koki, here we go. Hey, you want a nice piece of salami? I got a lovely piece for you. And who is that supposed to be? That's my butcher, Antonio. <laughs> we have never heard of your butcher. Maybe not, but if you add, it's uh, very much like him. <laughs> Can't you do any impressions of any well-known people? Sure I can. Jimmy Cagney. In a scene from the film, Disaster on the Fifth Avenue. You dirty rat! Oh, you dirty, dirty rat! Oh, you dirty rat! I'm gonna fix you! Oh, you dirty rat! I haven't finished yet! Well, Mr. Cagney sounds remarkably like your butcher. <laughs> and now, from France, the delightful Danielle. La 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 off La 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 off La 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 la
Do you know any of the words, Daniel? I do not sing the words, I just dance to the music. Mm. And what is all this off business? That is when I'm taking off my clothes. <laughs> I can't have that sort of thing going on. It is not going on, it is coming off. <laughs> not in my school. But I... Yeah, well, thank you, Daniel. Well done. Oh, Jolly good. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now, from the mysterious East, we have to sing for you Taro Nagazumi. Oh. I sing for you a traditional Japanese song called A Warrior's Lamento. Tell me, stop. Because it was awful. Oh, I thought it had a certain style. Yes, sickening. <laughs> Sorry. You know, like who? My son. <laughs> and now, from Germany, will you welcome with her animal impressions, Anna Schmidt? <laughs> Danke. I would like you to come with me on a walk in the black forest. First, we meet a farmer and his dog. Woof, woof. <laughs> the dog is chasing the sheep. Ba, ba. <laughs> and the cows. Moo, moo. <laughs> ah, here comes a man on his horse. Nay, nay. No, no, Anna. <laughs> Nine, nay, nay. No, no, you're supposed to make the actual sounds like woof, woof, or ba, ba, or mmm. I can't do that, hurts my throat. Oh, well, thank you for trying anyway. Jolly mm. good, well done. Right, uh, and now from China, with something peculiarly Chinese, will you welcome Miss Chung Su Li? In the conditions prevailing in China today, the contradictions among the people complies the contradictions among the working classes, the contradiction among the peasantry, the contradiction. Stop. <laughs> this is supposed to be a school concert, not a party political broadcast. Can't you sing or anything? I can sing song of revolution. Oh no. <laughs> right, and now it's time for a little comedy from Ali Nadim and Ranjit Singh. Yay. There's a little yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. I am saying, I am saying, I am saying. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Why is the rhinoceros being like an elephant? Why is the rhinoceros is like being an elephant? Because neither of them can ride a bicycle. <laughs> How much do I need to know that? Please be leaving the stage. There is a little yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. I am saying, I am saying, I am saying. Stop. You are not liking us? No. Oh, what did you expect, Morecambe and Wise? If you're wanting, we can be doing Morecambe and Wise. I could be the fat, short one with the hairy legs. And I'd be being the one with the glasses. <laughs> uh, so we'll discuss it later, thank you. Very well, very good, very good. Right, our next student to entertain you with a little culture is Jamila Ranja. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I am tell you beautiful English poetry by Thomas Gray. Huh? Elijah written in country churchyard. Elegy. Sorry, Master G. The curfew tolls the knell of par ting day. Ting day. The loving herd wind slowly o'er the lee. The fluffman homeward plods his dear relay and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Incredible. 
all. <laughs> yeah, I'll work on her pronunciation. Thank you, Jamila. And now, from Spain to entertain you, comes Juan Cervantes. Sorry, hey, hey, hey. right, sorry, right, sorry. Right. Uh, Mr. Brown, he tell you I am from Spain. That surprised you, eh? When I speak, I have no accent at all. <laughs> In Spain, one time, I was going to be the bullfighter. So, one Sunday afternoon, I go to the bullfight, and they put me in the bullring. <laughs> the bull comes out. I look at the bull, and the bull, he look at me. The bull, he look at me, and I look at the bull. And you know one thing? <laughs> the bull was better looking than me. You know, la. <laughs> so I. So I not become the bullfighter because I don't kill pretty bulls. <laughs> Good, huh? <laughs> ah, you never saw me dance the flamenco. I do it very good. Oh, la 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 la. And uh, finally, to, um, to complete our contribution, Greece and Sweden combine Maximilian Papandreos and Ingrid Svensson. Uh, okay. And now my beautiful assistant and I are going to do some uh, jiggling. Juggling. <laughs> okay. Are you ready, huh? Hi, ready, ham. Okay. Hey! 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 Forge the plates. <laughs> well now, you sit down both of you. Well, Mr. Brown, I think <coughs> I think we can write your class off. Oh, oh, oh please, Miss Courtney, the students will be so disappointed. I mean, we still have three days. Just give us a chance. Eh? Oh well, very well. But remember this, Mr. Brown. Good jobs are hard to find. <laughs> Watching them myself. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment, here is Jeremy Brown and his United Nations. Thank you.
seat. Hello, lads. Hey, what's all this? It's a bird. Go on. Hope we see it's not an elephant. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Sid, you can't get an elephant in a cage. I think he makes the joke. Oh. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. What sort of a bird is it then? A cockatrice. <laughs> Big pun? A cockatrice. Cockatrice? Hey, you're one cocker too many. <laughs> it's a cockley too. Cockatoo? Oh, you mean it's a sort of a parrot? Uh, that's right, yeah. Oh, what are you going to call this parrot then? Polly. That's original. <laughs> Paris, just who we want to see. Oh, well, if it's tea on tick you're after, forget it. No, 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 no. Look, we just bought the bird and we want to leave it with you. How do you want it cooking? <laughs> don't you want it cooking? Oh. It's our new pet. Oh, well, how was I to know? People eat anything these days. No, we just want you to look after it until we finish class, OK? Yes, all right. Put it behind the counter. OK. Thank you, Your Ladyship. <laughs> Evening, Sydney. Hello, Mr. Brown. Have a good weekend. Lousy. Got the mother in law staying with us. Oh, how'd you get on well with her then? She's never forgiven me for marrying her daughter, and I've never forgiven her for letting me. <laughs> you know, last night there was only one thing that stopped me putting my head in the gas oven. What was that? We're all electric. <laughs> oh, cheer up, Sid. Remember, when you feel things can't be worse, they can only get better. That's true. True. I suppose she has got a pop off sometime. <laughs> ah, uh, good evening, Daniel. Ah, bonsoir, Monsieur Brown. You're just the man I'm wanting. Me? Yes. Can you help me? Well, I'll do my best. I have the big problems. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I can't do much about those. <laughs> no, not that problem. Oh, sorry. My life, she's a mess up. Is she? I mean, is it? What sort of a mess up? I tell you, last month I met this boy. Ah, an affair of the heart. This boy, Pierre, he keeps writing to me. Yeah, he's a foreigner. No, he's French. Oh. Well, that to me. He's a... Never mind, go on. Henri has found the letters. Oh, the plot thickens. I not like a jealous man. Pierre? No. Oh, Henri. Marcel! He works with Henri as a consular. I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. Who is Marcel jealous of, Pierre or Henri? Emile! I shouldn't have asked. But there's another thing. He keeps telephoning me. Who? Pierre, Henri, Marcel or Emile? Jean-Paul. <laughs> I've heard of safety in numbers, but this is ridiculous. They're all after the one thing. My buddy. That's all they're after. Yeah. Well, you must just try and discourage them. Oh, no. I like it. <laughs> I see Pierre Monday. Henri Tuesday, Marcel Wednesdays, Emile Thursdays, and Jean Paul on Fridays. That is my problem. What is? My Saturdays and Sundays, they are so dull. <laughs> ah, good evening, Anna. You're busy? Oh, no, no, no. You've just finished. Good. I have a grosser problem. Oh, not another one. Who is it? Hans, Karl, Wilhelm, or Adolf? <laughs> no. It is my homework. Oh, sorry. Your question is asking, what is correct address for a member of parliament? Yes. I do not know where any members of parliament are living. No, the question means, how do you address them? What do you call an MP? Ah, I don't know that either. Right, honourable. Jawohl. They want me to write it on the blackboard? No, not W-R-I-T-E, R-I-G-H-T, right. 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 <laughs> Excuse me, please! <laughs> He has gone oranges. <laughs> yes, please. Doing bananas. Very good. <laughs> not open this door. I'm breaking it down. I'll unlock the door. Oh, no. I'm not unlocking the door. Right, well, if you won't unlock it, I will. I have been warning you. Now I'm coming in. Ah! <laughs> Andrew, what is the meaning of this? The meaning is... <laughs> Some damn fool. It's opening the door just as I'm charging it. Mr. Brown opens the door. <gasps> Thousand apologies. <laughs> right, come over here, Ali. Now, what is all this about? That barbarian is calling me a hairy goat. <laughs> is this true, Ali? Yes, please. 
But this infidel is calling me the son of a cross-eyed camel. I am calling him an illegitimate son of a cross-eyed camel. Yeah, well, it's not good enough. Ah, you want me to be calling him something worse? I don't want anybody calling anybody anything. Whatever your differences are, kindly leave them outside the classroom. Now sit down, the pair of you. Come on. Ah, Taro. Aso. Did you have a good weekend? I spent the weekend reading book by Charles Dickens. Oh, which book were you reading? Uh, which, which book were you reading? Oliver Twist. Really? <coughs> Did you understand most of the words? I understand all words. What, even the old English? Oh. No old English words in my book. Ah, must have been a revised edition. No, no. Japanese edition. <laughs> I thought it was too good to be true. Good evening, Master G. Still knitting away? Oh, no. I am the knit cardigan. <laughs> yeah, what I meant was... that uh, uh, you, you misunderstood what I was saying. And you are being misunderstood what I am being knit. No, why don't we just forget the whole thing? Good evening, Sully. Not good for me. Oh, dear, what's the matter? I have lost my riddle lead book. Oh, good. Ah, I mean, bad luck. I rock everywhere, but not find it. Does this mean you won't be treating us to any of the Honourable Chairman's quotations? Oh, no. No quotations by heart. Chairman Mao, he say, in every process there are... Shall everybody? Yes. Hello, boss. Uh, Only just made it. Sorry, boss. We had things to do. That's right. We just got a fantastic bird. Really? Does this bird have a name? Sure. Polly. In future, kindly refer to her as Polly and not as a bird. Okie cokey. She's going to be very good company for us at night. <laughs> us? What do you mean, us? Well, we're going to share her. One night she sleeps with me, another night she sleeps with Max. I don't think I want to hear anymore. Why? You not like birds? Well, let's just say I don't like sharing them. Hey, I'll fix something for you. You give me a fiver, we go get you a bird. Sure. What color you want? <laughs> oh, what color is yours? Mostly red, with a blue neck and a green dress. <laughs> ah, the penny's dropped. Where? <laughs> Polly is a parrot. Oh, that's right. What do you think she is? An elephant? Doesn't <laughs> matter. Sit down. Oh, what about the penny? No, the penny. Buenas tardes. Juan, you're late. Por favor. Never mind, por favor. You should have been here five minutes ago. Why? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Silencio! Thank you. Sorry. Why are you late? Uh, I tell you. My boss, where I work, he tell me about a horse who's going to win the big race tomorrow. Very clever horse. Talking horse. Juan, horses don't talk. Si, senor. He told me he'd get the tip straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Just a racing term. So right. Then he tell me to put my shirt on horse. You didn't? Nah. Oh, thank goodness for that. My shirt wouldn't fit the horse. Ah. Silence! I bet ten pounds to win on the horse. One well, ten pounds is a lot of money. You could lose. No lose. Tomorrow, I'll be plenty rich. Muchas pesetas. Look, there's no such thing as a certainty. Si, senor. My horse is sure to win. How do you know? Ah, easy, I tell you. Big race starts at two o'clock, so right? Yes. Bookmaker, he tell me, my horse starts at ten to one. <laughs> Those are the odds. Your horse will start at two o'clock just like all the rest. He tried to cheat me. No. I go punch his face. You'll do no such thing. Sit down. It's time we all started work. Now, I'll just take the register to Miss Courtney and then we'll have a look at your homework. All right? Oh. Yeah. Ah, Miss Courtney, I've brought the register. Two absentees tonight, Ingrid and Zoltan. Oh, well, I've had a letter from your Hungarian student. Oh, has he gone sick? No, he's gone back to Hungary. Oh. Enter. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Courtney? Yes. What do you want? 
I'm Sheikh Al Hamid, and I'm interested in your English classes. Oh, well, if you don't mind me saying so, your English is fairly good. Thank you. It is comforting to know that my years at Oxford were not wasted. <laughs> I would like my personal chauffeur to join your class. Oh, I'm afraid that is quite impossible. It is midterm and students are not permitted to join halfway through a course. Rules are rules. I'm sure you could make an exception for a little donation of uh, uh, two thousand pounds. <laughs> this isn't the Dorchester Hotel, you know. <laughs> This is an educational establishment. You can't expect us to bend the rules just because you plonk two grand on the table. Can he, Miss Courtney? Well, of course he can. <laughs> Where is your chauffeur now? Outside. Will you come in now? <laughs> But he's white. People usually are from Glasgow. <laughs> But of course. Well, why do you want us to teach him English? Because I can't understand a word of what he says. <laughs> I don't mean that, but I don't understand. I don't know what I'm a bit new, but. No, don't suppose you can, mate. I've been told you've got to hang about here. I shall burn a ten fudge you said it was going to do. But I think the whole idea is ridiculous. I am supposed to teach English to foreign students. He sounds like a foreign student. Oh, look, wouldn't it be far simpler for you to just get another chauffeur? No, I couldn't do that. You see, Jock's father gave his life defending my father during the war. I feel I owe him a living. Yeah, well, in that case, why don't you make him very happy and give him a job in your hall room or something? Don't be stupid, Mr. Brown. Oh, I wonder if you'd mind waiting outside for a moment while Mr. Brown and I discuss this matter privately. Not at all. The door, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Now, listen to me, Mr. Brown. You are a teacher of English, and it is your job to teach English, no matter who or what your students may happen to be. Well, actually, like don't interrupt. Now, remember that the Arabs are extremely wealthy. Who knows what other benefits they may bestow upon us? Only the other day, I was reading in the paper about an Arab who was so pleased with the service at his hotel that he presented the manager with a Rolls Royce. Yeah, well, we are not running a hotel, Miss Courtney. Money isn't the be-all and end. A Rolls Royce. <laughs> yes. Well, I suppose I could give it a try. Good. Look upon it as a challenge. I'll do my best. I wonder if you would care to join me in a cup of tea in the office, and then later on I'll show you round the school. How very kind of you. <laughs> well, what am I doing? Go away. You want to hang a bit here or what? <laughs> I'd like you to hang about. I'm going to try and teach you to speak English. Oh, don't it's all hell up, son. See me no bother. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly jumping for joy myself. Huh? <laughs> no. No. Oh, it's like a tower of Babel. Can't you think of anything better to do than chatter to each other? Sure. Hey, we go for a cup of tea. That's a good idea. <laughs> don't do no such thing. Sit down, be quiet, and pay attention. Right, you'd uh, better sit ne next to Anna. Okay. Oh, hen, how's it going? <laughs> What is your name? Hamish Hector Dougal Donald Stewart McGregor. <laughs> well, I'll put you down as Jock. Oh, we like Jim. Well, as you can see, we have a new student. Ah, uh, you're all very lucky for help me as one of you. You know what I mean? Or as you see yourself, oh, hi, the new and all that haggis bashing nonsense. <laughs> Don't blame me. What language is he speaking? <laughs> Believe it or not, it's English. Ah, it's right enough. You know, it's right enough. If that is English, what language is it that we are learning? Oh, Mr. McGregor is speaking in dialect. I thought you said he was speaking English. <laughs> what English? But. 
dealt with the dialect. Hey, I know all about them dialects. <laughs> you do? Sure, I've seen them on television. <laughs> Doctor Who and the dialects. <laughs> oh, that's Dalek. Ah, okay, okay. A dialect is a form of speech peculiar to certain areas. Uh, tell them where you're from. I am a jock. <laughs> what is jock? Oh, Master G, please, I am we know what is jock. Good. Would you like to tell us all? A jock is B, a funny story. <laughs> Mr. McGregor is from Scotland, which is part of Great Britain. Great Britain is comprised of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? No, Wales in England. Wales in the sea. <laughs> I'm talking about Wales, the country, at the end of the M4. Ah, sorry. Wrong number. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do with you for the moment. Oh, well, it's just such an accident. See, in that case, you're just going away. I'm not going, <laughs> going anywhere. Just sit down. For a start, you can concentrate on your diction. Well, I don't have a thought. What are you saying? <laughs> well, for example, repeat after me, the fat black cat sat on the mat. The fat black cat sat on the mat. No, no, no. Let's take each word separately, all right? Oh. The. The. Fat. The. No, not fat. Fat. Black. Black. Cat. Cat. Sat. Shat. On. 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 Uh, uh. Mat. Mat. Good. Now try the whole thing. I thought like I shot a mat. Now, well, you better just sit there and listen while I get on with the rest of the lesson. All right. Do you ever please yourself, son? You're all right. <laughs> what are you doing? Of the dram. Oh, you fancy a touch of stag's breath yourself, why run? Certainly not. And I don't allow drinking in the classroom. Oh, see, well, help yourself to smoke if you feel like. No drinking and no smoking. God, it's worse than being in a kirk. Precisely. <laughs> right, now, if you recall, I asked you each to write a brief essay on your various beliefs. I hope we've all done so. Suli, would you like to read us out your essay? What I brief. Firstly, I not believe in religion. Excuse me, Suli. The subject was what you believe, not what you don't believe. Firstly, it is necessary to make platform on which intellectual thought can stand. When building house, it is necessary to make firm foundation. Uh, excuse me, please. I'm not understanding something. Yes, Ali? What is it you're not understanding? I'm not understanding a word of what she's talking about. <laughs> I'm quite agree, Ali. Suli does rather tend to be dialectically verbose. Oh, blimey. Now I'm not understanding what you are saying. <laughs> point taken. Uh, right, sit down, Ellie. Thank you. Carry on, Suli, and this time stick to the point. I breathe everyone is equal in the eyes of state. I breathe in Chama now. I breathe in dictatorship of proletariat and suppression of capitalism. Ah, rubbish. Rubbish? <laughs> Western world collapse and evil. Ah, we haven't paddle in your paddy field. <laughs> Ah, oh, shut your gob. <laughs> Kindly keep your remarks to yourself. Excuse, please. Miss Terrell? Not polite, oh. To insult lady, oh. Please, apologize, oh. Get naughty. <laughs> Put up your fist, oh. Okay, Harry Carey, if it's a fight you want, you'll get one. You ready? Yeah! Oh, Honour. Must be satisfied or... Yeah, well, you can satisfy it after class. Sit down, Tara. <coughs> and as for you, I'd be obliged if you would keep quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Sully. I'll read your essay later. Um, Juan. Would you like to read us your essay? So right. What I believe by Juan Cervantes. Para servirle. So far, so good, eh? Yes, come on, get on with it. So right, so right. I believe in one God. And I believe in Jesus Christ. Spiritus Santo. Now, Jesus Christ, 
was the first Roman Catholic. Oh, what are you on about your big chanty ass, lad? <laughs> Por favor. He was Jewish. Por favor. Jock is trying to make the point that Christ was Jewish. Nah. He was a Roman Catholic. No, I was there. It was a Jewish. I punch you in your head. I'm kicking you up at the back side and I kick you up the front side. Just cross your eyes out. Can you please be leaving something for me also? Okay, who's first? Yeah, I'm going to get it. Sit down. Sit down. As for you, if I have any more interruptions from you, yeah. out you go. All right, all right. Not a word. Stum. Good. I go on, sir. I? No, Juan, your beliefs are just as controversial as Suli's. Por favor. No, it doesn't matter. Sit down there. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try you, Ranjit. I am believing that all men are being born equal. Oh, no. <laughs> Joe, I have warned you. Oh, come on, Jimmy. I can't be expected to sit here and listen to Charlie Chapati claiming his bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the same goes for you, take away Tommy. <laughs> I'll give you a bunch of fiber. <laughs> and as for you, you can just kind of just go. Where is everybody going? Tea Blake. Yes. Well, do it quietly. Ah, uh, Miss Courtney, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I can't do it. Can't do what? Put up with our Scottish friend. He's a, he's a disruptive influence on the rest of the class. Mr Brown, I am afraid that you must. I have invited the Sheikh to meet the Board of Governors. He has promised to give us a new school hall. I don't care if he's promised to give you the Albert Hall. <laughs> Forgive me, I couldn't help overhearing. Is there some sort of problem? No. Yes, I'm afraid I cannot put up any longer with this chauffeur of yours. He's rude, self-opinionated and extremely unpleasant. And you can keep your Rolls Royce. <laughs> what an extraordinary man. Hey, you better wait in the car. OK, Gaffard, just hang about and say the motor now, eh? Right. <laughs> that is a pity. I was quite looking forward to meeting your Board of Governors. And so you shall. But now the circumstances have changed. Well, circumstances may have changed, but the object of the exercise remains the same. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I understand it, you wish to be able to converse with your Scottish chauffeur. Yes, but I fail to see how that can be achieved now. Well, every problem has its solution. And that is? He does as I tell him, or he gets the sack. I shall be taking you for the rest of the lesson, and I won't stand for any nonsense. What has happened to Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown is in my office doing some private tuition. Repeat after me. It's a bra bricked moon licked nicked the nicked. It's a bra bricked moon licked licked the nicked. Very good. Try that.